folks, JD here, and today we have this. This is the Tiny 8X Series King Kong. Uh, now this is a small FPV racer. Once we open the box, as you can see, this is the basic version. There are three versions. There's basic and advanced, and uh, there's another one as well that I can't remember. As this is the basic version, this is the cheaper out of the three, and you only get one battery and the quadcopter. Uh, as well as a battery charger in there as well. Now, let's just take everything out. Let me just make sure I'm not missing anything. No, I'm not. Beautiful. Right then, so let's put the box to one side. Now, this little racer is quite large. It's an 85mm racer. It feels really sturdy, really rugged. It actually comes in at quite a nice little weight as well. So it's flying weight with its battery in the back comes in at 56 grams, so a little bit heavier than we've seen from the other King Kong uh, FPV racers, uh, but still, it still has that legendary King Kong feel to it, it feels really nice, feels rugged, these these uh, tri-propellers as well fit in so, so nice. These particular motors are brushed, uh, the coreless brushed, and they're 8520 motors, very easy to come across, you can replace them should you need to. Now from the top we have a, I think it's a 650 TVL camera at the top. Uh, working our way directly to the back you have this particular, this very nice shocking pink. Now when you want to bind your transmitter you have a bind button inside here so make sure your transmitter is on and you hold the bind button and then you turn this on and click bind and then after a couple of minutes everything should bind without any issue. This is the FlySky version, I have got the FlySky receiver so this is going to work with my Isheen i6 transmitter. Now as you work further to the back you have your antennas directly inside here all clipped in nice. On the bottom you have quite a large battery 550 milliamp hour 3.8 volt. Now this should give you up to five minutes of flight which isn't that much but the, these coreless motors really pack a punch coming in at about 68 to 69,000 rpm. All in all to get five minutes out of this little battery is not bad at all. Now if you do go for the more for the advanced version you do get more batteries more propellers as this is a basic version then I just get one of each one set of propellers one battery. As you can see everything on the underside should you come to replace these batteries this just pull as usual just pull plug and socket very very easy very very nice you get a little elastic band here that you can just uh, uh, you can just um, pull your little cable out of and then you can pull the the motor out of the top here exactly like I did on the Isheen QX65 a few months ago. All in all that is brilliant I'm really really looking forward to flying this. Now as this is uh, controlled as your, your flight controller for this is beta flight let's break for a second and have a little look at the beta flight configuration. Okay, so to begin with, let's have a quick little look over this. Let's click on the ports. Okay, so UART 1 and UART 2 need to be selected inside here just to ensure that everything is ready to fly. Let's next go into configuration. Um, motor stop, I like to have that armed. Brushed is selected. I've already changed the name to JD Quad. That's everything I'm going to be changing inside here. As for power and battery, nothing to change. PID settings, I'm not going to change anything for this particular flight in the PID settings. I'm just going to leave everything as a standard default arrangement. Um, now, next one, let's go through to receiver. I'm not going to change anything on the receiver side of things either. I'm going to leave them exactly pre-selected as their default values. Um, AET is already selected. Now on here, I'm just going to bring over the top bit here over to the, the default level. I'm not going to select any other mode for the second. Uh, motors, never have anything to do with this. I always leave them default selected. As for the OSD as well. Now this didn't work. It didn't come through on my headset, the OSD. So it was off as standard. I've turned it on. Uh, but maybe this particular model doesn't include OSD. Although I do believe it did say it in the manual. Uh, and then the final one that we're going to be looking at is just black box, nothing to do. And if you type version, same as all, it comes up and tells you the last default firmware version that has been installed on this particular quadcopter. Okay, with that, back to the package. Okay, so what we're going to do now is just have a quick little look at the charger that comes with it. 
it's quite simple. It's a lovely little charger, as we've seen before with a lot of FPV racers. This is kind of the standard. You have two ports, one for your smaller 1S batteries, one for your larger batteries as well. And you have a voltage switch on the side, so it depends on the voltage of the particular battery. So double check before you plug it in as to whether or not you flick the controller up or whether you have it down to charge. Now, that being said, these chargers are extremely fragile so when you do put them in make sure you don't push them too hard or you're going to be snapping this printed circuit board and then of course you get your manual now these manuals are pretty good they're pretty large but they go into quite a lot of detail and they are in multiple languages as well now a lot of this Wow, okay, yeah, this is, okay, if I turn it round, this is the English version here. Now, this goes into Tiny 6, Tiny 7, and Tiny 8, as well as the motors used and the configuration, so you're best off keeping this for when you may blow those motors, so you know which motors go in clockwise and which ones go in counterclockwise. Then you've got your transmitter, what buttons do what, You've got your frequency tables on your printed circuit boards inside there to have a little look at as well. As well as your standard beta flight, um, your standard beta flight configuration there also. That should be set up on the factory. But never, never assume, always check. And it's always good to just plug this in to beta flight and have a little look. On the underside, you'll have a micro USB port here. Just plug this in, open up beta flight and away to go. You can just double check those defaults there. Right, perfect. And then right at the very end, you've got factory and product codes and frequencies, should you need them, for all those people out there that like to tinker around with their FPV racers. So there we are, folks. This is what you get. So you get your FPV racer, your manual, and you also get your battery charger as well, as well as your one battery from the basic version, which is just underneath this particular quadcopter. Thank you, folks, for watching and listening. I've been JD. You've been fantastic as always. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Hello and welcome to all the new subscribers. I hope you're enjoying the channel. So until next time, my friends, happy flying.